So another phenomenon that you also need to understand is cyclic variations in hormone release. And basically uh, what we're trying to say here is periodic variation in hormone release that is influenced by a number of factors that we are going to see. Um, this um, is uh, like you don't have the same levels or the same um, production of the same levels of hormone at all time. There are certain variations and they can vary due to one, seasonal changes. So you have high levels of certain hormones during certain seasons. But also this can vary depending on stages of development and aging. A good example being um, testosterone hormone. You know, when, when, when a male ages, the levels of testosterone hormone decreases. So production of testosterone hormone decreases. So if you take um, uh, 15 years, um, let's say 22 years boy, and uh, compare the level of testosterone with a 50 years um, man, the levels of testosterone will be higher in 22 years boy compared to 50 years man so these are you know changes in production release of hormones uh, due to different stages of development or aging but again another factor is do you know or daily cycles but also sleep you know there is increased production of certain hormone let's say in the morning and some other hormones are produced more uh, during uh, the day, some other hormones are produced more uh, during the night. But of particular importance is the effect of sleep with growth hormone. So growth hormone production increases during early stages of sleep. This is very important. If, if you talk to any uh, professional bodybuilders, they know the importance of sleep and, and this is where you can see uh, the effect of growth hormone when, when it comes to building muscles. So you have high levels of um, growth hormone during the first stages of sleep. This is very important. So the take home message here is usually we have biological variations when it comes to production of hormones. Um, this applies to the level of hormones also in blood. When you when you measure levels of blood uh, of hormone in blood, you should take into consideration these biological or acceptable variation. And as we've seen, you have seasonal changes. You have changes due to uh, stages of development and aging, and you have changes due to duno cycle or due to sleep and we have a good example of growth hormone of course later on we are going to see um, examples of other hormones that actually are being affected by these uh, biological states or by these uh, different states so this is something that we discussed before transport of hormones in blood and transport of hormones in blood um, depends on water solubility or lipid solubility or depends on the chemical nature of hormone. So this is something that we have discussed before. So if we take an example of water soluble hormones, a good example being peptides and catecholamines, usually they dissolve in plasma as we have discussed before. So they are transported free in plasma. They don't need a carrier protein. They are not bound to plasma protein. So they are freely uh, being transported in blood and they can easily diffuse out of the capillaries into the interstitial fluid one because they are water soluble two because they are not bound to these big protein molecules so they can easily escape and get out of the circulation these are water soluble hormones a good example being peptides and catecholamines so another class of hormones based on their chemical nature are actually the steroids and thyroid hormones and this is mainly due to lipid solubility and these hormones circulate mainly bound to plasma proteins so they don't circulate free you have um, around 90% of these hormones being bound to plasma protein and you only have about 10% that circulate free so these ones because they are bound to these large protein molecules they cannot easily diffuse across the capillaries and one point to note is when a hormone is bound to plasma protein it is actually biologically inactive so it is the free fraction of the hormone that is biologically active this is a very important point to note we have discussed this before and of course when we get into specific hormones we are going to see uh, the details of this 
So, because they are bound to plasma proteins, that means uh, they, they, they are being slowly being cleared because, you know, they, they are bound to these big molecules and they cannot diffuse across the capillaries. So they stay in blood for quite a long time. So they have a slow clearance from plasma. Uh, that means they have longer half-lives if you compare them to this other group. So these are some of the fundamental points that we need to understand. And this is how you relate the chemical nature of hormones, you know, the, the, how they are being transported and the mechanism of action that we are going to see later and so many other things that can actually be dictated just by knowing the chemical nature of these hormones.